Happy back to school. It is August 31st. School for me starts next week. On the coding train, I'm going to do, attempt to do a classic again. Um, I'm going to attempt to do a coding challenge and make the snake game. And yes, I have done this before, but I'm, I'm going to do this in order to celebrate something that was announced today, the P5.js web editor. So the P5.js official web editor is out. Um, and I'm going to try, it. the nice thing about this is when I code this at the end of it, <laughs> stop with the sound effects, at the end of this, you'll be able to just go directly to this URL, which I'll include in the video description, and hit duplicate. You'll have to make an account for the web editor. Hit duplicate and, um, and then make your own version of it from my code and share that with me. So I will include all about how to do that in the video description. And I'm going to give myself about, oh, my watch isn't on. There's no timer, but I actually have to go to be home very soon. So I'm giving myself about 20 minutes, which of course is going to take longer than that. But let's see how it goes. All right, so however long this video is, is however long it takes. Hopefully there'll be no edits. Every once in a while, I, you know, it just has to be an edit because the whole system crashes. I better get coding. <sighs> Snake game. Have you ever played the snake game? The idea of the snake game is there is a uh, canvas. You are a dot or like a little square on that canvas. Another dot or another little square appears, which is a piece of food. You want to move. You can only move to the right, up or down along. Grab that piece of food. Once you grab that piece of food, a new piece of food appears somewhere else and you get a little more on your tail. You get another piece of your body and you get the next piece of food and it gets longer and it gets longer and anytime you hit the edge, if you run into one of the edges, you die, the game's over or if you hit another part of your body and it becomes much harder as your body gets longer and longer. That's the snake game, that's what I'm going to code. So in order to do this, I'm going to use object oriented programming. In my previous version of this coding challenge, I used like, this constructor function thing and now we have ES6 classes. I want like a happy sound. So um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, by the way, if you want to know all about the P5.js web editor, check a link to a Medium article that is in the video's description and a whole bunch of videos from the Processing Foundation. There's a nice video with Cassie Tarakasian who created the editor describing all of its features. But one feature is that I can go over here and find this little thing, this little tick, less than, greater than sign, whatever it is, and I can say add file. And I'm going to add a file, I'm going to call it snake.js. And now I have a file called snake.js where I can create a snake class. Now, if you've never done object-oriented programming before, the idea is that this is a template for this snake object that I'm going to make in my code and it has a constructor function. I will refer you to my tutorials about program object-oriented programming with ES6 classes. Now, uh, but in order for, uh, I need to actually go into index.html so that the page when I run the code is actually using both sketch.js and snake.js. So that's there. So now I have sketch.js, which is just a, oh, and I need to see this, a 400 by 400 canvas and a snake.js, which has nothing in it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, let snake and in setup, setup being where the code starts in a P5.js sketch, snake equals new, snake. So I've made a new snake and what do I want to do? I want to update the snake's location every frame and I want to display it. So the idea here is I want to say snake.update and I want to say snake.show. I'll use show as a meaning show yourself, display. Hmm, what is this? Snake.update is not a function. Oh, come on, I have to write the code for it? <laughs> yes, I have to write the code for it. So if I'm going to write a function called update, that means I have to put a function in the snake class called update, and then I have to put a function called show. Ta-da, I'm done. Coding challenge complete. Snake game, not at all. So this is like the skeleton of the code, but I actually need to put stuff in here, and I'm going to hit shift tab to tidy up the indentation. Okay. Hmm. What do I need? So I'm going to do something a little weird. I know that what I need is an array. Because even though the snake's position you could think of as like a single x, y location, <laughs> I botched this the last time I did this, really what I want is an array because I want to keep track of a list of all of its locations. And maybe the first element and probably more easily the last element of the array, when, when there's only one thing, is it's the sort of head of the snake, the front part of the snake. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say um, 
this dot, I'm going to call it a body, is an array. And then I'm going to say uh, this dot body index zero, I'm going to put one thing is, is create vector. Now, create vector is a function in P5 that creates a vector object, and that vector object has an X and a Y. So I'm going to create it at zero, zero. And then in update, I'm going to say hmm, this dot body index zero dot X plus equal this dot X speed, I'll call it X speed or X direction or something. And this dot body dot Y, index zero dot Y equals this dot Y direction. Oh, this is so ugly, but it's the way I'm doing it, right? Instead of having a, this is a little weird, like normally if it's just like one thing that's moving around, I just have an X and a Y. Instead, I have a body index zero X and a body index zero Y because later I'm gonna get to add more pieces to the body. So uh, if I run this, What's this dot x direction, this dot y direction? It doesn't even exist. So those are going to be variables that tell me, is the snake moving to the right or left? Is the snake moving up and down? So those values, this dot x dir is, let's start them at zero. So they're zero. And so, uh, and then show, I'm going to do something. I'm going to say, what do I want to do? Showing the snake is drawing a rectangle. I'll do something a little bit weird. So I'm going to draw, again, eventually this is going to become a loop because I'm going to be drawing all the pieces of it. But let's just start with putting in the X and a Y. And I'm just going to say, I'm going to make it 10. This is going to be a little weird. Actually, uh, 10 by 10, the rectangle. And I'm sorry that you can't see all the code. Let me, I'm not, I'm, I'm not used to doing challenges with the web editor. So let's see if I can make this a little bit wider. There we go. Um, so, okay, rectangle, and then uh, I'm going to say fill zero just to make it black. And look at that. Already, I see it there. I better save this. Oh, saved a minute ago. It's auto-saving. That's wonderful. There it is, right there. Let me make x direction one. Uh, whoops, two equals by accident. Look, it's moving now, right? Because the idea in update, the body's head's y, x location is increasing, right? If I made this 100, it's moving really, really fast. 10, it's moving pretty fast. If I change this back to zero and make this one, it's moving down. I could do all sorts of weird things, make that five, but that's not, I'm no longer in the snake game. The snake game, by definition, I can only move horizontally or vertically. So I'm gonna start these at zero, and then I'm also, just right now, I'm gonna change this to one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this in a funny way that I think might work well. It's a tiny little dot, a one pixel dot, that rectangle. I am going to now, in Sketch, I'm going to have the keyboard be the controls. Uh, so I'm going to say key pressed. Oh, I forgot how to do this already. <laughs> so like if key equals up, what is it in P5? Basically, key pressed is an event that whenever I press a key, this function happens then I can check what key did I press. But I totally can never remember how to write this function. So let's try to look at the P5 reference. Uh, somebody maybe in the chat will tell me, let's look at key pressed. If value equals zero, no. If key code equals left arrow, this is good. This is what I want, it's the key code. So key is for like, um, the, which character I press, but if I'm using the arrows, I need to use left arrow, right? So let me actually just grab this. And I'm gonna say, if key code, and I know I could use a switch statement. I'm just not going to right now, okay. Please don't, don't at me. That's what I'm supposed to say. Somebody taught me that who's younger than me. Uh, <laughs> key code equals left arrow. Key code equals right arrow. Um, oh, doing a terrible job of paste. Paste, down arrow, up arrow. Ah, no, not uh, auto format. There we go. Okay, so now what I want to do is if it's the less left arrow, then snake dot set direction. Uh, this is the way I did it before. I remember left is negative one to the negative one along the x and zero along the y. So I'm going to write a function that's like saying set the direction. So this is for left. This is for right. Uh, this is for, mm, oh, I'm so freaked out, down, 
I'm remaking this video. Why? This is for uh, up, negative one. Okay, uh, tidy code. So I think this is the right idea. Depending on which key I press, move the snake in that direction. Um, so now I can say, uh, I can write this function set direction, and I'm getting an x and a y, and I'm just saying this dot x direction equals x, and this dot y direction equals y. So whatever comes into the function sets those things. <laughs> People, I can see the chat over there. Please do a switch statement. No. Duplicate my code and change it and make, a make it better. Use a switch statement. Okay. So now I'm going to do this. Let's zoom in here. Let's see if this works. Ah, come on. No, I have to click. Yes. Down. Look at this. So now it's working, right? So I'm pressing all the keys and I'm moving it around. Perfect. Now I need to deal with something. I don't want to have to like zoom in. It's like so tiny. So ultimately, there's an issue here. Like I want to think about the snake in units of one. Here's my snake. It moves one pixel over. It moves one pixel over. It moves one pixel over. But I have a canvas that's 400 by 400 and I probably want to draw it as like a 10 by 10 thing. So I want to have a variable. I'm going to have a variable. I'm going to call it REZ, short for like resolution. Can you see that? And I'm going to just make that 10. So that variable, and actually, to be honest, I could just use, you know what I could do? I could just use the scale function. I'm just going to use the scale. So I was going to use math and I was going to always multiply its x location by that resolution and multiply and, and use the resolution for the width. But the truth of the matter is P5 has a scale function. So I'm going to say let resolution equal 10. And then in the draw function, I can just say scale by resolution. And what that's going to do, and notice like, see, look, look at that. I can change this to 50. I can make this 10. I can make this 100. It's just scaling it up. And if I move this to the, and so now if I make this 10 and I move to the right, it's actually moving every 10 pixels also, because when it changes by one, it moves 10. And I could, what I might want to do is, you know, normally I want the animation to go really fast, but I'm going to change the frame rate to five just to slow it down so we can see, whoops. What's, what's a little tricky here when using the P5 web editor is I need to click over here to give this preview pane focus so that it gets the key commands. So now you can see it moving over. And this, you know, this can, the frame rate, typically I don't want to like slow the frame rate of the animation down, but this is a way I can control the speed of the sketch. So this is what I'm going to do. Okay. So um, now I need, ah, okay. So I need to have a food, a piece of food. So I'm going to make the piece of food a, uh, just a vector at some random, I could make a food class, but I think that's overkill. I'm going to make it at, ah, okay. So here's now a tricky thing. I want the food, okay, let's say my, my sketch is 400 by 400. And really, so really my world is 40 by 40, but I scaled it up by 10. So I need a variable to keep track of the actual dimensions of the, the world. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm, I'm going to use a W, well, I don't know, I'm just trying to think of col columns or, I'm going to say W uh, equal, uh, I'm going to actually just put let W and let H here. So I'm going to say uh, W equals floor width divided by resolution. So what is this? Width divided by resolution is 400 divided by 10, which is 40. And the reason why I'm using floor there is just in case my math is off, I want w to be an integer, a whole number. That will take off the decimal place. h equals floor height. And of course, it's a square, so I don't really need to have two separate values. But your window might not be a square. Uh, there, OK. So, um, so now that I have that, why was I doing this again? <laughs> oh, the food. Because now I want to get an x position. And guess what? I, I remember this from before. I'm going to write a function, uh, food location, food location. And what happens in this function is I pick an x, which is floor random w, and a y, floor, so I need a spot, random h, right? I need to find a random spot for the food and set that there. And then in draw, I'm going to make the food uh, a red. 
My, I'm standing a little bit in front of the code, but hopefully this is okay. And I'm going to say uh, rectangle foo.x foo.y11. So, you know, I guess I could make it a point or something, but the, it's just everything is of, of unit one scaled up. Uh, okay, can I, oh, and I need to actually call at the beginning food location. And why is it, oh, it's not written. So, you know what I need to do here is I need to say no stroke. That stroke is getting scaled in a strange way. So, this is actually 10 by 10 pixels. It was much bigger because with a stroke there, um, that's getting scaled as well. So now we can see, uh, whoops, if I click over here, we can see and eventually, come on, get that piece of food. Okay, so now, good, so this is working. Ah, the state game is working. Oh, this is good. This is much better than I did before. <laughs> Helps to do this a second time, even though that was like a couple of years ago. Let's make this 20, just because I want to be able to see it better. Okay, so that's good. Let me just make sure things are lining up. Excellent. So now I need a test. I'm going to say snake.eat food. So that means I need a function. And let's put that, I don't know if the order matters so much. I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to say uh, eat uh, uh, food. I'm just going to make an argument called position. Um, so basically the food is getting passed in here and I'm eating the food if. Now this is really probably a bad idea because you never know in JavaScript if you've really got the number like 3 or if by accident you have the number 3.0000001. <laughs> but I'm going to test in theory if the xy of the head of the snake is the same as the xy of the piece of food. If they're equal, I should be eating the food. So let's... Let's just see if that works. So I'm going to say uh, if, for the first, let x equal, let's just put this in a separate variable. Let y equal this dot, I'm going to get that head of the snake location. If x equals pos.x and y equals pos.y, then uh, return true and also say console console um, I'm gonna say print I could say console log print food eaten okay so let's see if this works it's a little bit dangerous a little bit treacherous and I'm gonna say return false otherwise and then in the sketch I'm gonna say if if I'm gonna have this return something if you eat the food then you just need a new food location, right? So immediately we should pick a new random location. All right, let's try this. I missed it. I can't get it. Oh, so that's working. All right, so I think all my flooring of the numbers, you know, maybe I need to have some better, it, this, this seems to be fine. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna live with that. I'm happy with it. Okay, so now we are so close. What do I need to do? Oh, this is, this is going very remarkably well. <laughs> that, that's a sure sign for something to go wrong. Um, I'm going to say this dot grow. If I eat the food, I want the snake to grow. If I'm calling a function that I intend to be part of the snake object within the snake class, I need to reference it by saying this dot grow. And so that means I need to write another function grow. And what that means is I want to expand the array. Okay, okay. Oh, this is the tricky part. Oh, this is where everything went wrong before. I'm, I'm not even looking at the chat. There's a chat going on. I'm sure everyone's screaming at me. <laughs> um, I'm going to add another variable. This dot len for length, length of the snake. And it starts as one. So at, at a minimum, I know when I want to grow, I want length to go up by one. So I want the length to increase and I need to add something onto the array. Add something to the end, add something to the beginning. This is unclear to me. So first of all, let's try, so, so let's just try saying uh, this dot body dot, okay, so first let me get the last, I'm thinking about this. You know what? 
I think this is going to be, I think actually this is simpler than I think. Let's just try saying this.body.push create vector. So I'm just going to push a blank vector into it. Like I know I need something else in the array. So let me just, and push is something that adds to the end of the array. Maybe I want to put it at the beginning. I'll figure that out in a second. But I'm just going to push to the end of the array. And actually, I'm, now I'm realizing the flaw in that, but that's okay. Yeah, so actually, so pushing, um, I could put it in the beginning and that would actually work, I think. But, okay, I gotta keep, I, we're going to figure this out. I'm like trying to think it through. Sometimes it's easier than thinking it through, just code it. So what I want to do now, this whole thing, so first of all, what this means is any time I want to draw the snake, I don't actually want to draw, um, I don't want to draw uh, just a single rectangle. I want to draw all the rectangles. So I'm going to say, and I, I could use like a for of loop or something, but I'm just going to say, uh, I'm just going to use a regular old fashioned this dot uh, for loop, this dot body dot length, I plus plus, and then this loop will go around here. Uh oh. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I've killed the editor! Let's see when it last auto. So I'm going to quickly click off this auto refresh. And where did I last leave off? Ah, that's not so bad. So the last time it auto saved was here. And I'm going to, I'm going to retype my loop more carefully without having auto refresh on. But i is less than this.body.length. I have to move this now back all the way over here. Um, I plus plus. And I'm going to auto format that. And I'm going to say this.body.i. This. So now I'm drawing every element in there. Okay. I, um, so now I'm going to hit save. Project is saved, so I have that. Um, oh, I lost what I wrote in Grow. Ah, live and learn. Let me move this over here. Oh, all right, because I had this open, that's why. Uh, so this actually comes back here. So Grow, um, what did I do in that? I said this.body.push create vector, and I said this.length. I don't know if I need this length variable, to be honest because by definition, the length of the array is the length variable. That was so sad. And then did I add that? And then I added that. So let's see. I lost some code. You're not working. You're not really coding if you don't lose some code every once in a while to an infinite loop. Okay. So here we're good. Now this is, what's going to happen here is really weird, but I'm going to get the food. Oops. Ah, shoot, I missed the food. So interestingly, why am I not seeing, I would imagine that I would see another, so one thing, I would guess that I'm going to see another appendage, but it would just be at zero, zero. Put, oh, well, look at me, look at this, push create vector. Mm. Create vector at zero, zero, let me just do that. So that I forgot. So what we're going to see here is this. There we go. So that second part of the snake is there, but it's up there. So what I need to do now is when I'm updating the snake's location, this is, I'm going to comment this out for a second. The first thing that I want to do, and there's shift. Okay, there's an array function called shift. I forgot what, I, last time I did this, I didn't use that. I just manually moved all the spots in the array. Let's look at array JavaScript shift. I don't actually know what this function does, but everyone was telling me I should do it. Shift. One, two, oh, look at that. That's so perfect. So this is what I want. I want to shift all the elements down one, and I guess I'm losing one. So let me just see about, let me see if I understand this. So um, just in the console, let me practice this. Let array equal 5, 6, 9, 100, 5. So that's what's in the array. And if I say array.shift, whoops, no. That's what it returns. Did it shift it? But it shifted. Oh, so it's giving me the thing that it got rid of, and then it's making it one less. So this is perfect. This is exactly what I need. Oh, I love it. So actually, all I need to do every time an update is say this.body.shift, and then that's moving everything over, and then the last spot, so one thing I need to do is let me save where it currently is. 
So let me pop, it does pop, pop doesn't remove it from the array, right? So if I say array.pop, that gave me the element five, but the array still, oh no, that got rid of it. How do I get something off the end without removing it? Oh, unshift adds from the beginning, that's interesting. Um, how do I get the last element without removing it? Well, I'm just gonna do it the manual way. Uh, this dot, I'm just gonna say let head equal this dot body dot, um, and this dot body dot length minus one. That's the last element, <laughs> dot copy. So this is me taking the last element and making a copy of it. And then what I wanna do is say head dot x plus equal uh, this dot x direction, head dot y plus equal this dot y direction. And then I just wanna put that back on. So I wanna like save where it was and then move that and then the body is all there. Um, yeah, so I'm being told that this is actually how to do it. So that's the last element, copying it. Let's, so one thing that I wanna do, what's wrong here? This dot body index, this cannot, cannot read property copy of undefined. So do I not have, oh, because I'm doing it after shift. And if I'm shifting something with zero, yeah, if I'm shifting something with zero, so shift has to happen after, right? Because if it only has one thing in it, I shift it, it's gone. Okay. So this is working now. Oh, look at that. So this worked <laughs> and it made it longer, but I, it, it created it back at the start. So I need to keep that location when I grow it. So the same thing I need to do here in grow, what I want to do is not add uh, what I want to do is uh, do this exact same thing and then uh, push, right? I want to take the last one and add it to the end. So I need to just duplicate where it was before to the end. I think this should do the trick. Yep. Is it, am I like going one step behind by accident? I'm not sure, but well, that's pretty good. You know why the food, oh, Oh, you know what? It's not getting it until I get to the back. Why? Because eat is always checking this one. I need to check the last element. Same thing. This is very awkward the way I'm doing it. And uh, I'm sure somebody will make their own version that's less awkward, but I need to check the location of the head against the food. Here we go. Let's try this one more time. Snake game go. Here we go. And up. There, this is better. Okay, great, this is working. Yay, all right, now, guess what? One more thing. I need to know when to restart the game. When do I die? So I'm going to do, I'm gonna do a function called like check, you know, check for death or like, I don't know, end game. And what I need to do is I need to check if the head intersects with any of the other positions. So the head, as we know, is, um, well, it's this. This is a little bit weird what I'm doing. That's the last spot. And now I can say uh, for let i equal zero, um, i is less than this dot body dot length minus one. I don't wanna check the head against itself. i plus plus, um, I'm gonna say let um, part equal this dot body index i if part uh, index uh, if part dot x equals x and part dot part dot y equals y then return true the game is over or if x is greater than uh, what was it w minus one or if it's gone off the screen or x is less than zero or y is greater than uh, h minus one, or y is less than zero, then also return true. I should probably check that first, because if you're off the edge, I don't need to check, I don't need to check any of the body parts. <laughs> uh, oh, but I need to first get the x and y values. So I'm doing something a little weird, but sometimes I'm using like, the vector and then I'm saying pause.x and pause.y and sometimes I'm pulling out the x and y from the vector. Eh. And then at the end I'm going to say return false. 
So let's see if now I can get end game to work. So in here, I'm going to say also now at the end, if snake.end game, I'm just going to say print, print end game, and I'm going to say uh, background uh, 255, 0, 0, and no loop. So I'm just going to completely shut down the P5 sketch if the game ends. So this is not necessarily what you want to do for like, interaction design, but I'm just testing the feature. So the first thing I'm going to do is just try to go off the edge. So I'm going to go off the bottom. Yeah, OK, so that works. So going off the edge, at least the bottom, like I should probably test the other edges. Whoa, what just happened there? Um, and I took my auto refresh off. I'm going to put that on. Um, so if I go off the top, ooh, that didn't work. I probably had a mistake somewhere in there. If, oh, why? This should be why. Oops, that was a mistake. Um, okay, so yeah, all right, hopefully that fixed that. Um, I'm going to, and now what I need to do, so one thing I need to do just to be able to test better is I'm going to add something. I'm going to add the mouse pressed function, and I'm going to say this uh, snake dot grow. So anytime I click the mouse, I'm going to grow the snake so I can do it, sort of test this feature. Um, oh, whoops, shoot. Oh, and you know what? I should set the snake in the middle. So the snake's location should probably be uh, initially a W divided by 2 and H divided by 2. And I've got to keep everything an integer. So I've got to put floor in here just in case. Uh, all right, so now let me, ah, whoa, why did that, oh, oh, because when I grow, the head becomes the same location as the other part of the body, and then I check to see if the game is over, but shouldn't it fix it with, oh, but if it's not moving, so I've got to move it first. I mean, this should be okay. <laughs> Ah, no, oh, because if I click to get focus, ah, oh, this is so sad. This is like a silly debugging thing. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it grow with the space bar, not mouse pressed. <laughs> Else if key equals space. <laughs> I'm just trying to do this to debug it, and so I can do whatever I want. <laughs> so I click over here and I move it. So I'm going to make it longer. So now let's see if it dies. Yep, okay, great. So I think I finished this game. Um, really what I want to do is come up with an end screen or restart the game or have some sort of score. Let's see before I go how long I can play it before I die. And oh, let me just show you something. If I go, I'm going to hit save. If I go under, this is a feature of the web editor. If I go uh, file share, I'm going to go here and I'm going to grab this full screen URL. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to open a new tab. And now it's just the game. I'm going to make it bigger for fun times. I'm going to click in here and ready, I'm going to play the game. Goodbye. Make your own version. Look for the link. Sign up for a P5 web editor account. Hit duplicate. Make your own version, share it in the comments. There will be a codingtrain.com page, which you can also share it. This is much too easy. I'm going to be here forever, aren't I? I'm going to look at the... Well, this is working. <laughs> I made the game. I can go home now. Let's just see how long this goes for. Ah, okay, I died. I don't know why I died. I thought oh, I hit backwards. So, uh, good thing I hit backwards. The game is over. Thank you, thank you. So that might be a bug that I want to fix. So that actually if you hit back, but I guess you, you should lose the game if you hit backwards. I don't know. Uh, you know, you can make the design more interesting. You can do all sorts of things. You can now make your own version of the Snake game in P5, in the web editor, instantly share it. Uh, thank you to the Processing Foundation, Cassie Terakasian, all the people who made contributions to the P5 web editor. Um, and all the people have worked on P5.js over the years. I'm so excited to be able to make tutorials and coding challenges with this. I will still use 
my uh, other workflow and I will use processing, but I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time on The Coding Train.